Good morning. Well, I thank Pastor Paul for the opportunity given to me to preach today. But the truth of the matter is, I feel a little nervous this morning. When I saw the conference minister walked in, <laughs> I nearly ran to Paul to say, can you preach the sermon today? <laughs> but because I got few things written, I will try my best. We are all gathered here this morning because of our determination. We are all gathered here this morning because of our commitment to our faith. We are all gathered here this morning because of the strong faith we have in this confession. Somebody told me earlier this morning that they did not expect us to be gathered here this morning. And indeed, it is because of the hope we have in Christ Jesus. And it is because of that hope that our conference minister is here this morning. And her being here is a manifestation, is a demonstration that there are thousands, oh, so much many people who are standing up along with us despite our crisis. I've received information that my friend Danielle Brown from Wanona, who pastors Wanona. She's on holiday in Florida, but she also taking time to join our worship this morning. Conference minister, we want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for your surprise. I'm not going to be nervous. I will try my best. <laughs> on Sunday, in this very place, we celebrated the glorious resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The beautiful service, the music, and even the sermon that really blessed our souls are all testament of the resurrection that we witnessed last week. On Monday, we woke up to news that fire was burning on God's temple where the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had joyously taken place a few hours earlier. Those who watched the fire firsthand were better described the flames, the heat, the smoke that was engulfed in here. But despite the flames of fire, despite the destruction caused by the fire, I only see one thing, and that thing is faith grows right here, no matter what. Christ's resurrection is a witness. Christ's resurrection is a testament of hope for all of us. You and I would have had no reason to be gathered here this morning if the resurrection of Jesus Christ hadn't taken place. In the face of fire disaster, Christ's resurrection takes away all fears. It gives us victory. It gives us joy. It gives us everlasting hope. By his resurrection and his appearance to his disciples, Jesus released the disciples from the burden of fear. So this morning, you and I are overcomers. We are the winners because faith grows right here. Despite the agonizing death, despite the humiliating death, Christ died. Death could not hold him. He lives again. And because Christ lives again, the fear of a midnight fire, the fear of any persecution can do us nothing because faith grows right here. We are gathered this morning because the devil is a liar and the devil is defeated. Because we are stronger. Christ's resurrection gives us everlasting hope. Let's remember that Christ's resurrection is the foundation of our faith. And Christ's resurrection is our resurrection. The prelate Sherry Abode, not our Sherry now. Sherry Abode writes, Jesus is the only resurrected person with a glorified body, who will never die again. This is the hope you and I have because Christ lives. All of us have safe as fear has no place in our lives. Even a midnight fire will not stop us from worshiping here. That's the message we want to send. 
Because fear has no place in our lives, that's why we are gathered this morning to serve the God of heaven. The world may try to instigate fear in our lives, but our strategy is mightier because our hope lies in the resurrection of Jesus Christ because Christ's resurrection is our resurrection. If my faith had never been strong in the theology of the resurrection, it has gotten more stronger than ever before since my father passed away in Liberia nine months ago. My father had always loved the Liberian flag. He had always said, and, and when he dies, we should put the, the Liberian flag over his casket. In his bedroom, he had the Liberian flag at the head part of his bed. We just did not know that there was something spiritually powerful about this flag my father loved so much until he died. In the Pele tradition in Liberia, when a person dies and is buried, after certain days, the family and the community gather together to celebrate rituals which point to the deceased crossing over from this life to their afterlife. For a woman, it takes three days. For a man, it's four days. During the night of my father's crossover rituals, my sister had a dream where she saw our father flying over our town with the Liberian flag on his wing. That was the dream that gave me hope. She said our father was driving, was flying with the Liberian flag with his wing all over the town, over our house. And even people from everywhere came out to see him in her dream. But the reality is, Christ's resurrection is our resurrection. In fact, in the Pele clan, there is a belief that my father, who was a chief, who died, we know that he died, but there is a belief in the Pele clan that someone like my father, who was a chief, did not die. There is a belief that as a chief, he has only gone to reinforce his authority and will come back to govern again. This is the idea of the resurrection from the African traditional religion perspective. And today, we want to assure you that because Christ died and resurrected, you and I have no fear, no fire, no destruction, no persecution has authority or power over us because our eyes are set on Christ's resurrection. This is why Jesus himself says in John 14, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you, and if I prepare that place, I will come back to you and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you shall also be. Christ's resurrection demonstrates that we are loved and that we can be hopeful forever and ever. John saw the empty tomb of Jesus. Peter saw the empty tomb of Jesus. Mary saw the empty tomb of Jesus. Mary Magdalene saw the empty tomb and even told the disciple that she has spoken to the raising Lord. Thomas, one of the disciples who was not present but heard about the resurrection and Jesus' appearance to the disciples, he insisted, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand to his side, I will not believe. This morning, I want us to do little justice to Thomas. We know that he is referred to as the adopting Thomas. But I'd like to share with us that Thomas's account of the resurrection is a great testament. If there was fingerprint requirement those days in order to prove the resurrection, the account of Thomas would have sufficed in the court of law because of his fingerprint on Jesus' body. The fingerprint of Thomas on Jesus' body would have been used as part of the evidence, as part of the body of evidence in the court of law. So at least let's give this little justice to Thomas. This morning, I want all of us to put our fingers in the nails mark of Jesus. I will tell you how we can do that. According to biblical commentators, to prove that the resurrection is truly, that is truly took place, first, it must be recognized that the crucifixion of Jesus took place in Jerusalem. Two, he was buried in Jerusalem. 
Three, he was he resurrected in Jerusalem. Four, the church started in Jerusalem. The, the, the commentary continues that in five, the church started in Jerusalem and started that Jesus has resurrected. That was the message that Jesus has resurrected. And there is this question. Why would people in Jerusalem believe that Jesus had risen if the tomb was still occupied? Brothers and sisters in Christ, it is time for us to believe the resurrection. That the resurrection is our victory. Within the resurrection lies our eternity, lies our everlasting life. St. Augustine writes, we are an Easter people and hallelujah is our cry. So in times like these, when fire is burning on our church, hallelujah should be or is our cry because we gave God the glory. Despite everything, we know that God will never leave us. God will never abandon us. Hallelujah. Here, Jesus appeared to his disciples with his body, with the wounds and bruises everywhere, but on his glorified body. Thomas saw the nails mark and put his hands in it and believed. Thomas put his hands at the side of Jesus. He saw the nails mark and also believed. So the question to you and I, do we believe? This morning, like Thomas, you and I are to put our fingers in the nail marks of Jesus. And how can we do this? In times like these, when we stand up to boldly proclaim our faith in the face of fire disaster on our church, we get to put our fingers in the nail mark of Jesus. This morning, in times like these, when we fearlessly gather at our church, this morning as we are doing to say hallelujah to the Lord, nothing will stop us from gathering here. We get to put our fingers in the nail mark of Jesus. In times like these, when we stand up with the leadership of our church and redouble our commitment to rebuild our church and say we will not stop coming here, we will continue to proclaim our faith, we get to put our fingers in the nail marks of Jesus. All because hope grows here. Sher and Brian Winter, Sher and Brian Winters put their fingers in the nails mark of Jesus that night. They drove from Iota all the way here and was here that, that night throughout the morning. Even though Brian is on the plane right now going to Florida. Brian, enjoy your holiday. <laughs> but Brian had been here throughout the week making sure that things were put together, even appearing on the television. Brian and Shara put their fingers in the nails mark of Jesus. Debbie, our own Debbie Adams, with a broken leg. Is it a broken leg or knee replacement? <laughs> knee replacement. She had to abandon her king. She had to abandon her walker and was here to make sure that everything is possible. She put her fingers in the nail mark of Jesus. Kirby Bakken has been here. The next, the, the, the next morning when I saw her, I thought, is he one of the firemen? Because he was all dark and looking dark and smoke everywhere. This is a guy who did computer, but when I saw him doing something like forensic investigation, I said, wait, is it computer or forensic science? <laughs> so he has been here to make sure that he helped the investigators and make sure that things are done properly. He has been here putting his fingers in the nails mark of Jesus. I know Paul will not want me to say this, but I want this congregation to stand. Let us give these people, let us please stand and give them a hand of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Paul, thank you for your leadership. And we just want to thank God for you. Thank you for your leadership. The disciples of Jesus were hiding because they feared their lives after their leader was apprehended and nailed to the cross. They also just thought that it would be them after their leader. And I see reason why the disciples had such a fear. On November 12, 1985, there was a pre-down military coup in Liberia. 
The military coup led by General Thomas Kuyongpa, the then commanding general of the armed forces of Liberia, went on air to declare that he has overthrown the government of President Samuel Doe. Some of my father's friends who were working in that government at, as directors and ministers, they ran away from Monrovia quickly and came to our village in order to hide themselves because the military were going after the government officials. But by 2 p.m., it turned out that the coup had failed. President Doe went on air to address the nation that he is still in power. This morning, I'd like to share with all of us that with the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus is still in power. With the appearance of Jesus to his disciples, Jesus is still in power. With the re resurrection of Jesus, his appearance to his disciples, and even talking to Mary and Mary Magdalene, Jesus Christ is still in power. And because Jesus is still in power, you and I are still in power here at Peace Church, no matter a midnight fire. It is time for us to stand up to proclaim our faith. Our message this morning, like Jesus, when he appeared to his disciples, he told them, peace be with you. We want to say to all of our brothers and sisters who have been standing up with us, calling us, emailing us, sending us a message, who have been praying for us, peace be with you out there. Even our own members for just committing together here to defy the devil, I want to say, peace be with you for your commitment. One thing, our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. Let us remember that we too, as his followers, we will be crucified. But joyfully, because he resurrected, we too will resurrect. Christ's resurrection settled it all. An empty tomb demonstrates that God is still at work. An empty tomb demonstrates that Jesus is still in power. When the world around us is broken, when we feel abandoned, when our marriage are broken and we can't find love, when we feel isolated, when we have no, no hope anywhere, when we are shouldered down, when we are pressed down by burdens of doubt, when illnesses in our bodies refuse to give way, our hope in Christ's resurrection defeats everything. Our hope in Christ is stronger than a midnight fire. Our hope in Christ is stronger than the persecution. Our hope in Christ is stronger than anything we can think about. So this morning, I call on all of us, let us not feel defeated because hope grows here and hope will continue to grow here. Amen. <laughs>